Hello, my name is Mary Jo Fender and this is Math for Middle School. Today we're going to be talking about adding integers using a number line and algebra tiles. What you'll need for today is paper and pencil to follow along. Okay, take a few seconds and let's get ready to learn. When we talk about adding integers on a number line or even using algebra tiles, we first have to understand what is an integer. And an integer is a natural number. This is numbers that you counted with. This is what you learned in kindergarten and first grade. You start counting with one, two, three. Those are natural numbers and they're opposites. So if I have one, my opposite is negative one. If I have five, my opposite is negative five. 25, my opposite is negative 25. 75, my opposite is negative 75. You get the you get the picture. And the number zero. Now, those three types of numbers, natural numbers, their opposite, and zeros, make up our integers. And most of the time, you're going to see a number line that looks similar to this. It's either horizontal or it's vertical. Now, I prefer to draw number lines horizontally when I'm solving equations because it's just faster for me to go left or right. You'll notice that anything that is positive is going to go to the right. Anything that is negative is going to go to the left. And you learn this in first, second, even third grade that when you subtract, you're going to go to the left and when you add, you're going to go to the right. That's going to be something that we're going to continue to use, except negative is going to go to the left. Okay, that negative is the same as subtraction. Now, vertical number lines are going to look a little different. If you have um, or going in a positive direction, the number is increasing. If you're going in a negative direction, you're going to go down. Now, it's getting winter time and our temperatures are falling, so that would be a representation of a negative number. It's going downward. Um, so that's vertical and horizontal number lines. Let's take a look at how we would use that. When adding integers with the same signs, we need to pay attention to those signs because they're going to tell us whether we need to go to the left or to the right. Because they're both positive, remember, positive is to the right, so that's the way we're going to go. Now, people, um, depending on how familiar they are with the number lines, have a certain um, tack, I guess you might want to say, on how you draw. But when in, in the state of Missouri taking your assessment tests, they're going to be drawn in a specific way. They're always going to start at zero, and they're going to have a little tick mark and the number closest to the number line is going to be the first term or integer, depending on whether you're working with negatives and positives or fractions. Rational numbers will throw negatives in there too. Let's just stick with this, okay? So our first term is three, and we're just gonna kind of go three spaces to the right. You're going to want to put an arrow at the end of that number or the end of the arrow to show the direction that it's positive. I always like to put the number on top just in case I either go too short or too long. I can convey what I'm really trying to do here. Now, the second number is five. And so I'm gonna put a little tick mark right where I ended with three and I'm going to go five more spaces. Now, sometimes you might want to count to know exactly where you're going to end up, but I know I'm going to end up right here. And so if I look at that and I go straight down, my number is 8. So if I go 3 units to the right and then 5 more units to the right, I'm at 8 on my number line. So I know a positive 3 plus a positive 5, or 3 plus 5 is 8. Let's try it with negatives. Remember, negatives are going to go to your left. I'm going to use a red arrow this time to help you see that it's negative. So I'm going to put a little tick mark at 0. 
I'm going to go three units to the right. I'm always going to put an arrow to show my direction. And I'm going to write a little negative three on top. My next number, because it's the same sign, is a negative four. So I'm going to start where I left off. And I'm going to go four more units to the left. That's going to be negative four. Now I'm going to put a little line so I know where I'm at in the number line. I know this is five right here. And I'm going to go two spaces over. So this is going to be negative seven. Always double check your negatives because I know when I'm working with my algebra students, I always check those first because that's usually the first mistake you're going to make. So check those negatives. So I'm at negative 7. So I know my negative 3 plus another negative 3 because I'm continuing down the number line is going to be equal to negative 7. Well, what if I have different signs? So let's show an example using 5 and negative 3. We're always going to start at 0. 5 units to the right. I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to stop at the number 5. Now I'm going to write number 5 on top. I'm going to start at number 5 and I'm going to go 3 units to the left. Now you'll notice where I end up on the number line is one, two spaces to the right of two. Let me erase that because that looks like a negative. And so two spaces to the right of zero is going to be positive two. Always pay attention. Have I passed the zero? Am I on the negative side or am I still on the right side, the positive side? One thing I do want you to notice is this area right here which is negative 3, and part of the positive 5, they cancel out each other. This is called a zero. In algebra tiles, I call it a zero pair, where they cancel each other out. So that tells me that once I cancel that part of the 5 out, what's left of the 5 is going to be my answer. So that's going to be 2. So 3. I'm sorry, 5 plus negative 3 is going to be a positive 2. Let's try one more example very quickly. 9 plus negative 4. Remember, we're going to go 9 spaces. 9 spaces to the right. We're going to stop at 9. And then we're going to go 4 spaces back to the left, and this is where we end up. It's right at the number 5, so 9 plus negative 4 is positive 5. Notice this again, this portion right here cancels each other out. That creates my 0, and that now leaves me with 5 left over. So 9 plus negative 4 is 5. Your turn, very quickly. 3 plus negative 5. How many spaces to the right? I hope you said 3. Now, how many spaces to the left? Remember, they're different signs. Positive to the right, negative to the left. We're going to go to the left 5. Notice I passed 0. Here's where I landed. So I'm at negative 2. Notice this portion right here that creates my 0. And this is how much I have left over. I'm two spaces to the left of 0. So that represents my negative 2. Now, let's take a look with algebra tiles. I always like algebra tiles because they're a little bit easier to see. Anything that is yellow or a color, some algebra tiles are green, some are blue, it all depends, are going to be positive. And so I've already um, put out the algebra tiles for you 
notice I have four positive and I've placed seven positive. Now I always put them in groups of five if I can so I can count them easily. I don't have any zeros. I don't have a negative and a positive. That's going to be a zero pair. Because I don't have any zeros, I'm going to add them all together. And that tells me 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That tells me I have 11 total tiles. So they're all the same color. They're all positive. So that's going to be positive 11. So let's take a look at what would a negative look like. Negatives are going to be red. And so I have negative 3 here, and I have another negative 3. Again, I don't have any opposites, so they're not canceling out or creating a 0. So I'm just going to add them up. So 3 plus 3 is 6. Remember, those are red or negative, so my answer is negative 6. So let's try it with different signs. Now you'll notice with this 9 and negative 3 I have some opposites and right here are our opposites and this is called a zero pair. When you get good at negatives and positives or integers um, you always kind of think of zero pairs in your head. How many of one number cancels out the other and then what do I have left? So here's a zero pair here's a zero pair, here's a zero pair. They cancel out, what do I have left? I have one, two, three, four, five, six positives. So that means nine plus negative three is equal to positive six. Remember these cancel because they equal zero. So let's take a quick look at another one. Negative four, and positive 12. Do you see any opposites? I do. So here's a zero, here's a zero, here's a zero, here's a zero. Because they're opposites, they cancel. Remember I like to group things in five so they're easily to count. Here's five here, here's two here, and here's one. So I know one tile plus five tiles plus two tiles well, this is 7 plus one more. I know that's 8. So negative 4 plus 12 is going to be positive 8. Notice my leftover tiles are positive, so I don't even have to worry about my sign. That's it for today's lesson. Let's take a quick review. When adding integers using a number line or algebra tiles, make sure you're looking for things that cancel. When you're drawing a number line, make sure that you're starting at zero. Positive goes to the right, negative goes to the left. Look for the zero pairs in algebra tiles. That will tell you what cancels and anything left over is going to be your answer. Double check those negatives. Don't want to lose those because if you don't place them there, we assume it's positive. Thank you for joining me today. It's been a pleasure having you in class. My name is Mary Jo Fender, and I'll see you next week.